Hello everyone, hello, and it's time for more pickups. Pickups, pickups, lots and lots of pickups. Lots of things, lots of things. So let's start off with the big stuff. Um, as I said, my nephew really enjoyed the Skyline, those spiders eventual. So I went and got them Giants. I got myself Villager and Giants. And well, I found them the cheapest. For free shipping, I needed to spend uh, $35. And I saw on top of those was the 3DS version of Swap Force for $10. Brand new. So I threw that in with it too. So I got that. In the Giants console version, I don't have the box over here, but uh, I have the figurines that I got with it. And as I also noted in some other videos, I also got the 3DS version, which came with him and a Sindel. But since my nephew, I only got the Portal owner version, because he always has a Portal, and it comes with three Wex. So I gave him the extra Spyro, uh, the extra Sindel, and I bought this guy in the buy to get three free from GameStop thing. So in the end, he's going to get the two starters uh, that come with the console version anyway, so... That works out. I like the portal with that too because it's wild and not wireless like the one with Spy was eventual because I had the batteries died on me twice when I did a playthrough there on my Let's Play channel. So, and <clears throat> moving on, uh, I also got the 3DS version of Giants, obviously, too. Now, I actually got some NES finds here, which are very nice. These were all from Goodwill. Uh, Jackal, it's in very nice condition uh, inside. Tecmo Bowl for $3. Now, this is actually a really nice find, because Tecmo Bowl usually demands a little money. So that was a really nice find. And a HAL Laboratory game, Vegas Dreams, which is a weird kind of, like, when you're walking around the lobby, it's kind of like RPG looking kind of thing but it's a casino game um this was a little more mature in japan i think it had some censorship in the american version it's a very odd title but uh that was also three dollars and some more stuff it was a pretty good find at the goodwill this weekend the dig or well it's dig not the dig it's just dig from uh, LucasArts. It's a point click game. Uh, people may remember I actually found a copy of this at the Good Samaritan store before, but uh, that only had the back piece and it didn't have the manual. And I was like, $3? And the disc is also in great condition. So now I have two discs and I will probably give one of those away. It was a very nice find. So now I have a complete case version of it, which of course I'm happy with. Uh, a old warning company game, the Treasures Cove. Uh, just a lot of those I remember when I was a kid. Now this one I took a bit of whisk on. Because in the final spot, it has a CD thing still in it. Now, I've seen PC games have an extra CD thing. Because, you know, while there is a mold without that, it I think it has to do with that it probably cost a little more or something i don't know for sure maybe a certain time period thought about making a mold for that but it has that so i don't know if this normally has four discs that's something i have to look up but all the discs it has is in perfect condition and everything so i figured worst case scenario if this is missing a disc at least I got a multi-case out of it because I always, if I can find these multi-cases, like the Samaritan store sometimes will do like a 50 cent sale thing on disc shit. And I always take that as an opportunity to get any of these that were in good condition because I, I always need them for placements because you, you can't find those very easily. Uh, Infamous 2 for 10 bucks sealed. It was 9 that well, I guess you don't get taxed, so actually it was nine nine nine, but... Uh, it's sealed. Uh, probably can get this cheaper if I was to look in other places. But um, I would probably also have to pay shipping on that. So, you know, that's not a bad price. I also got, and it's in this box here, that's for my nephew. Disney Infinity 2.0 The Marvel. And uh, this is really nice. I tried it out because I, I don't know much about the Disney Infinite thing. So, um... It is a little like Skylanders, but what I find kind of odd is the game itself doesn't come with stages for you to play. It has a figurine that's like White Heel that you actually have to buy. 
Now, well, this one comes with one, but there's actually a version of this thing that doesn't come with one, which I believe is called the uh, Toy Box version. And uh, that's kind of weird. You actually have to buy stages. And those, I know for a fact, are $29 and come with two Kildo figurines. And that is very expensive. So, to be honest, I, and there's a video where I talk about Spyro's Eventual. I gotta feel more whipped off on that if I was to buy those personally. Because, I mean, the game itself doesn't have levels with it. That feels kind of whiff off. But I got that for $16 from Goodwill. Uh, it still goes for about 50 at GameStop. Uh, Amazon that has it between like 25 30 So that was a really good deal. Uh, the copy was sealed. Obviously, I opened it so I could try it out. Uh, probably if I see a version of 1.0 and 2.0 for 10 bucks eventually, which I would assume eventually they'll probably get down now, uh, I'll probably pick it up for that, but, um, 16 bucks, man, I don't know, considering I have to buy the stages, like, what the fuck, man, I don't know, that feels a lot more whippy off -y to me, but I don't know. Anyway, moving on to Skylanders crap around. There's a lot more stuff, we're not even out. Uh, GameStop, uh, oddly enough, I looked on Amazon, uh, this is still like 50 bucks on Amazon. And it's only the PS4 version, oddly enough. But GameStop had a sealed version of Sniper Elite for $29. So I was like, well, it's a special edition in that. And it's a pretty nice thing. It's just a little steel case now. It looks a little beat up in that, you know, for looks. And open up and you get a nice little artwork there and you get a few goodies, some cards, some music, a little bullet keychain, some dog tags. It's not a bad little, uh, little thing. And for $29, you know, I'm always a sucker for limited edition stuff. And, you know, I'd hate to see this blown away eventually, which is probably where its fate would have been. Of course, I would have been able to get freed in, but eh. And then, of course, we have the actual game here. So, $29 sealed, brand new limited edition version. Can't really complain about that too much. In the DOS computer range, I have a really interesting specimen here. These came from the Goodwill. And I usually never, like, these are the second time I ever saw DOS games at Goodwill. But this is called Wise of the Robots. I think there's a console version of this. But uh, this is very interesting, because on the back, where was it? Um, somewhere with, like, up to a 100 frames of animation support fluid robotic movements. And it was from uh, published by Time Wano Interactive. And we got some Duke Nukem advertisements in there with 500 Dukin levels. But here's the thing that blew me away. Look how many discs. There are 14 floppy discs. This game is 14 floppy discs. O-M-G. What the hell, man? I've never seen a DOS game have that many freaking floppy discs. I think the most I've saw is like four. And then I got some of the usual stuff, a little mail-in thing. Uh, oh, a t-shirt off. Oh, I, I don't think that's any good. There's a little slip thing here. It's probably was for mailing it. It got the top whipped off. And then we got a book here. Looks like we can see some of the characters inside. Yeah, I think there's a Super Nintendo copy of this game, I think. I think it was a really bad game, I believe. <laughs> Somebody might have to correct me on that. But, um, yeah, 14... 14 discs. Oh, well, this is the top. It's stuck on the floppy disks. And all oh, there, it's it's very, very odd. Duke Nukem 3D. 500 levels to receive your $10 or $5 rebate called Wizard Walks. Let's see. Oh, yeah. See here. Maybe I should go contact the Duke Nukem people. I've seen people actually do joke things like there was that thing with the Fallout 4 where the person paid with bottle caps for Fallout 4 and he's actually getting a limited edition Fallout 4. Maybe maybe, maybe the Duke guys will give me something. <laughs> you never know. 
Uh, the uh, and the box is very nice. It's actually pretty sturdy, and uh, they did a really good paint job because, uh, like, like uh, what uh, Goodwills normally do, they had tape on it, and it's not even damaged. I was very careful about, it, but I'm surprised none of it got damaged at all. So that was three dollars. So after I got the tape off, I was like, "Sure, sold." Now this one, oddly enough, didn't have tape on it, and it was also three dollars. It's from Interplay, and we've seen this black box before. Sadly, it's a little, it's a little teeny little crushed in. There ain't too much in here. We got the floppy disks there. It looks like there's about four. Five of them now. There's five floppy disks, and we just got a little manual thing, and uh, we got a black and white book. Nothing too interesting looking inside. And I think this was like some kind of fight game or something here. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of a either a flying a ship or a mech or something with a cockpit. So something of that accord. So it was three dollars in the big box game. I always find I'm always a big sucker for these. And also I noted it had a uh, before the waiting board it has a little advisory there for violence. So that was a nice little find for DOS stuff because I haven't found any big boss uh, big box DOS stuff in a while. So for on um, some more normal stuff, I did find a very good condition of Duke Nukem 3D for the for the um, computer for one dollar at the Goodwill, which is usually odd. I don't they usually charge three dollars, but I got a few one dollar ones. I got just a a shooter thing, veteran Black Ops. It's in good condition, dollar. Why not? Uh, some of the trades I've traded, some of the stuff I found from GameStop. Uh, Bard's Tale was one of the things. I've kind of cut down. Well, I was originally getting like three games. Uh, we're, we're cutting it down to one and occasionally two. And not doing three unless there's a lot of interesting stuff. And it was a uh, conversation with him. Uh, basically, you know, he is running a business. And, you know, it's... The stuff's useful for him in a marketing, advertising, flashy kind of way. But, he, you know, he's not... He's mostly using it with uh, trading value to people like, hey, you want this game? I can throw in this poster and that for this and this. So he, he makes use of it, but he's not, you know, getting tons of money. So the idea is to kind of balance out. You know, I got a good number of games from him and that. So uh, one or two, it, it'll be a lot nicer, but I won't be getting as me. But still, still a nice thing to save some stuff for the landfill and... Still get a game, so, you know, not, nothing too bad. Uh, this game, uh, the cases, the, the I'm not going to open it. Uh, the little so-called pieces for the discs, they're almost all broken in this. And this is like five, six CDs, I think. This is a shitload of CDs in this. Uh, it's funny, Adventure Company, the imagery it shows kind of makes me think it's like some kind of mist-like game. So, um... It has crap loads of discs, just shitloads. Uh, this is a very old version. I don't know if there's a DRM free version, but uh, hopefully there is, because that'd be a well, nice old. Um, at the Samaritan store, uh, this was uh, just, uh, I think it was two bucks. It was, uh, I know I said I would never get one of these Lego games again. I might get Dimensions, because that's a little more different, but uh, these. These ones, I, I didn't find them very entertaining, the ones I've played. But uh, some people have told me the Indiana Jones ones are a lot fun also. I was like, eh, why not? Two dollars. Worst case scenario, I could probably trade it for about that same value anyway. Uh, Soldiers of Fortune 2 Double Helix. Just an old gun game for the PC. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. I hope I'm not getting a cold. That would suck. Um, this I actually got for free. Uh, they got rid of a bunch of disc things at the Samaritan. Like, uh, I got a whole bunch of extra disc stuff that I took. Because I'm always needing replacement CD cases stuff. I didn't take the artwork stuff out yet. But, uh, primarily, uh, I took all the cases. They were, like, mostly stuff for, like, exercise videos, music, and shit. So... 
or old software like Windows 95 or something. But uh, that was a warning game thing. It's a music jump thing. Um, might be something I'll look to see if I can give it to my nephew. But uh, I think it was in bad condition, so I'll probably just uh, scrap it, will we? Yeah, it's pretty scratched up, so... That's probably some no scrap. But, uh, just in case I keep it. Uh, I've never heard of this. It's a very good condition. Again, it was a $1 at a Goodwill. It has a very Doom kind of thing, and it says, No other games have all these features. It has a level editor inside, too, apparently. Uh, it's very nice condition. It's all very nice. There's a there was C for it. Ooh. Yeah, I, I might be catching cold. I hope not. Uh, the all wall kind of reminds me of Quake, though. How the humanoid guy is being robotic. Uh, a very damaged case of Midway Arcade Treasures. Um, I couldn't remember if I already had this. It's just $3. It was at a Goodwill. Uh, the insides are in good condition. The disc was in good condition. So, I couldn't remember if I had one. It's really bad lately. I, I can't remember some of the stuff I get now. <laughs> uh, I got a copy again from trading GameStop stuff I found. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Uh, may remember I actually found a limited steel case with the game in it. Um, so I'm probably going to switch out the games and uh, clean out the limited edition steel cover and keep that and put the one that was in it in this and probably trade this in. Ooh. And then uh, I do have two indie boxes. I think I did show this one off, but I did get to actually make a video on it. And I got the newest one here, which I will be recording right after this. So people who want to steal those Steam keys really quickly, uh, get your hands away when those videos are coming up. But um, trade-wise and all that stuff, uh, that should be everything that's new. Ooh. Oh, man, I really hope I'm not catching a cold. Uh, News-wise, um, the PS4 is supposed to be having an update where you can stream to YouTube Gaming. Um, I'm looking forward to that because so far what I've done with YouTube Gaming is really nice. Um, and, you know, my general audience is on YouTube. So, and I can actually do more that benefits me. Uh, to, you know, obviously I can actually earn a little money from the stream. Because on Twitch, you have to be big to even get one fucking penny from them. So, um, while I'll probably do Twitch occasionally for questionable games, uh, that won't be very, that more risque to be on YouTube. Um, generally a lot of companies have became more open and okay and stuff with being on YouTube, even if they might thought poly match it, which again, I said, uh, I don't care about thought poly matching as much. It's just when you get copyright strike is what I care about, and that's not as common nowadays. There's still, you know, some drama things that happened, like with Konami recently, like I said in my Ground Zeroes review, uh, my Ground Zeroes review, which I was uh, a little concerned about at the time, so... But, um, yeah, I, I'm going to probably doing a lot more primarily streaming on YouTube Gaming. The only problem I have really with it is the chat room is not resizable. And I can't really get the fit in the stream without compromising the video size vastly. So, um, YouTube Gaming will probably, unless I'm playing like a more retro game, well, you know, obviously it won't be widescreen, then that's different, but anything that's in widescreen, it has to compromise a good amount of the screen retail there, so I don't like that as much though, and I might try out, maybe try and ask people to go to a chat room, kind of like what, uh, um, Clan of the Game, uh, <laughs> that didn't sound like what it said. I got tongue-tied. That did not sound like what it sounded like. Clan of the Grave. <laughs> it seriously sounded like I said gay, didn't it? <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh, that's going to be taken way out of the way. Uh, kind of like how the Clan of the Grave... <laughs> okay. Clan of the Grey Wolf does 
for its podcast. It does not use the YouTube chat room. It uses a special chat room thing specifically for it. So I might try something like that so I can resize it like I did with Twitch's chat room when I did Twitch. Uh, Streaming-wise, uh, that's about all it's really on that. Uh, I do know uh, streaming has been kind of random. There's been events, real life, uh, stuff like that. But uh, primarily... Things are hopefully going to get a little stable again here. Uh, let's play wise and such. Um, I'm hoping to actually get Dragon's Crown finished today of recording this video. And have that done. I'm near the end of Way Into Historia. Still got to do a little more... Uh, a little more grinding and managing my party a little bit more. And try the last boss I fought because it handed me my ass really hardcore. Uh, Hell Divers has been something I've been randomly streaming on Twitch a little here on and off. Um, like I said before, I'm kind of trying to hold off on doing anything for my PS4 Twitch-wise. Because I'm waiting for that YouTube gaming option to become available. Because that will be a lot more supportive towards the channel. And also, I want to actually stream uh, The Phantom Pain. Tons of people have been streaming it, so I don't think there's going to be really a copy strike issue. And nobody's really had a problem with Konami, so, you know. And the Ground Zeroes videos for my stream that I put on my Let's Play channel, they did get a few third party matches, but they actually didn't get as many as I thought. I figured the whole thing would get third party match, which, again, I wasn't going to really care about. I just was more concerned that with some of the drama that was happening with Konami, I was kind of concerned whether they were going to go on some giant ban wage shit. Especially with a lot of people like Jim Sh Jim Sterling and that bad-mouthing Konami a lot. Like, there was this whole thing on Twitter where they, there was hashtag fuck Konami, so I was kind of... You know, I was kind of feel like maybe, you know, somebody might be pushing their buttons a little hard and they might slam down a few gravels around... YouTube, but uh, nothing going on there, so uh, unless something pops up soon, uh, once YouTube gaming is available on the PS4, I'm definitely going to stream The Phantom Pain. I want to play it so badly, but it's such a cutscene. You know, the Metal Gear series has always been very cutscene heavy, and something I grew to be very ca uh, careful about when doing the individual recordings on my PS4, because I ran into that problem on Destiny was you can't really just legitimately, like, when it ends, start recording immediately. So if you're in the middle of a cutscene, you lost a little of that cutscene in there. And I obviously want to avoid that. And Metal Gear has been notorious to have up to 20, 30 minute cutscene story segments of giant blabbled plot twists. So, yeah, that probably wouldn't work as nice since you're limited to 15 minutes, so... Uh, streaming would be a vastly better way of doing that since I can't capture HDMI yet until I get HDMI capture cable. So that's kind of what's going on with that. Uh, don't really have any plans of adding any new games. Ooh, damn it. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually getting controlled. I might be getting sick. But, um, I don't have any plans of adding any new games until I get some of the shit I need done. No, oh, man. It was good to get Bloodborne and Spyro's Adventure out of the way. I want to get Dragon's Crown out of the way. And I want to get way into Historia out of the way. I'm actually, uh, devoting some time to Class of Heroes to get some progress in that. And I've been doing some grinding in way in, uh, no, uh, the record of the August War Zero. I know. That is my longest going Let's Play. I mean, seriously, that dates back to my old apartment. Fuck, man. Oh, man, that game is long. But, um, I'm trying to get some more grinding there. It's so close to the end, but it's yet so far from horrible super boss wapage. <laughs> but, that's what I'm primarily doing. Um, there are a few silly things I want to actually, uh, show. You might notice something in the back that's a little weird somewhere. If you look 
really closely. Yeah, but no hints. No, no hints at all on any of that. <laughs> um, I think that's about all that's going on. Uh, there might be a little more overtime. Uh, sadly, some of the events I went over were quick walk related. Labor Day was a day off, and we had an event today. And um, those probably screwed up walk. Plus, last week we had to leave walk early because we ran out of uh, helium to do the tests they need to do on the uh, product we make. So... Yeah, I kind of feel like there's going to be overtime next week, which I plan on putting in a vacation day to hopefully detract from or bell gauge whether we're going to be walking overtime or not. Because if we do, then yes, we fell behind. If we don't, then that looks better in the future. Um, besides that, uh... I do want to get Mario Maker. That looks really fun, actually. I've actually seen a few people play it. Uh, it looks really interesting. I actually want to pick that up. But uh, money, of course, is always drained down really fast. And pre-orders and things. But there was some of my pre-orders coming out. Uh, I believe Dancing All Night, Persona 4 Dancing All Night, where we get to see Teddy Disco and Kanji fist punch somebody in the face and Yosuke falling into a trash can again probably rolling around <laughs> that'd be funny <laughs> but uh, I'm really looking forward to that I know a lot of people like the the games kind of like what the fuck this is an RPG series going to a dance game but whatever Persona has really good music so I'm just going to enjoy the game but you know, I understand if you want, you know, an RPG, I mean, I, I get that, but that's what Persona 4, uh, P P Persona 5 is for. Um, I think there was something else coming out this month, too. Uh, I did also get the um, Vita game for uh, Dum Dumba Wampa. I never can say it right. Uh, the third one, the, um, 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 I'm trying to remember the subtitle they gave it, um... I can't remember the subtitle, but the, the third new game that takes place between the first and the second one. Um, two best friends are actually let's playing that. And it really has me upset because I'm not playing it right now. I'm really busy with a lot of other games. And that makes me incredibly sad because I love those games. They are so twisted, fucking weird, and Monokubo's evil laugh, man. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, definitely look forward to playing it when I get some free time to play it. But, uh, yeah. I'd love to watch it, but I don't want to spoil the story. I actually would have loved them to play the other two games. Uh, apparently they have played them, but they just didn't do videos on them. So, that kind of makes me sad, but, eh. It goes on a long list along with everyone who's playing Phantom Pain. Because I can't watch any of them because I don't want that be spoiled at freaking all. All I know is you go in a coma. Your hand is gone. You fucked up eye. Which, well, what is it? Well, actually it was fucked up Metal Gear Solid 3 anyway. Um, there's a sniper who doesn't talk and you get a dog. And a bass, and Ocelot is voiced by Troy Baker, and that's all I know about fan pain. I don't want no spoils. No, 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 no. I want to see the twisted story for myself. But anyway, if you have any questions or anything of that, uh, leave a comment down below, and I will get with you, and hopefully I will see you another time, another place where we can praise the sun. Damn, I can't wait for Dark Souls 3, damn it. Why the fuck is Japan getting in March? Damn it!